So in the last video, we showed how to draw background tiles. I've gone away and made a bunch of sprites now in a sprite for an upcoming game that we'll be obviously doing in this channel. Uh, we've got a little pug called Rusty, which is the name of my pug. And we have some assets starting to be made, things like coins and treasure chests. And uh, we're starting to do backgrounds and many other things. So this will eventually turn into the game. But what I wanted to do today was show you a sprite. It's now much more capable than it was before. And it can replace the old Game Boy tile creator and that kind of workflow and to be much more modern. So I'd absolutely recommend getting the latest a sprite. What we're going to do today with a sprite is generate the classic splash background. So I also run the company Retro 6 and we repair and modify Game Boys as part of our business. And you see it a lot with modders where they want a test cartridge with their own logo on and they'll make a splash screen. And there's many ways of doing this, but they're all outdated and a bit limited and not very powerful. So we're going to make using a sprite and a template I've created a splash screen. So if you pull the Retro 6 Resources GitHub repository on GitHub, this is all open source, and go to the Game Development, Game Boy, Resources, Assets and a sprite folder, you'll find I have a splash screen blank. So this is all set up for you. There's also in there, you'll notice a palette. So you want to go to your drop down and load palette and load in that Game Boy palette. That will give you these colors which match the file we're going to use in a moment. But let's just run through how I've made this templated file so you guys can have the same thing. So if we didn't have this file, we would first create a brand new file. I'm going to make it 160 by 140 pixels, a full screen for the Game Boy. Click indexed and transparent and click OK. And this is the baseline. After this, the first thing I'm going to do is go to edit preferences and make sure we have the preferences set the same as what I have. So the first one is grid. Change the grid from 16 to 8 because the Game Boy is an 8 pixel grid and click apply. Go to background, change the background to 8 by 8 also and click apply. And these grid sizes are important in order to export for Game Boy. So do make sure to set them. Click apply and OK. Next up, we're going to go to Sprite and Properties. And you want to make sure the transparent color is set to index zero, which it should be by default. And that just simply means when you're using the first color of a sprite and you have transparency enabled, it will show as transparent. This is good when you want to draw a tile that's going to be used as an actual sprite. And the first index color would actually be transparent on the Game Boy. Next, you want to do Sprite, Color Mode, and select Indexed. And this is making sure you have our palette already loaded and then with the Game Boy palette loaded if you're going to work on this with us I'd recommend to do save palette as default and this will make this a default palette and anywhere then when you make a new file you could just create a new file do dot 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 and load default palette to pull in the default palette once we've done that you need to go to view grid and grid settings and you also need to change this to 8x8 if it's not already. This should already update from Edit Preferences and Grid. It should match that, but double check to make sure it does. Next, we just make a new layer. So, Layer New, a new layer. Right click on the new layer, so select Convert, Background. And you'll see now it makes the background, because it knows it's a background layer, show the first color in our palette. And now you can simply hide and show the background if you wanted to visually see a sprite or not. And then the final step is the top layer, right click, convert to tile map. And what this now does is if we got a brush and selected something and drew, this tile mapper will now automatically create the tiles for us and only create it where the tiles need to be looped. So all those steps give you what is effectively the template I've provided here, a splash blank screen. So now for the fun part, I use something called Affinity Photo instead of Photoshop now as much as I can because people that follow along and learn from this uh, don't want to be paying a monthly subscription for things like Photoshop. So Affinity Photo doesn't have as much power as Photoshop, but it has a lot of the power and what we need. You can use GIMP, which is free, but it's also really outdated and ugly looking UI and not great. So I would recommend simply purchasing Affinity Photo. It's a one-off payment, it's only £70, and it's really worth it for everything you'll be doing in terms of your development and ability. If you don't want to purchase that, then you can just go onto GIMP and download GIMP for free, and you should be able to still do this. 
but with Affinity Photo installed in the same GitHub repository in the same folder, so Game Development, Game Boy, Resources, Assets, and A Sprite, you'll find we have a splash screen here called Game Boy Splash Screen Blank. I've also exported a Photoshop file that you can use in GIMP and Photoshop. So I'll just go ahead and open this blank file. Now let me show you the power of this file. If I just take one of these images, say just a random photo of some SP shells that I took in the store, and copy that image. And now I go into my created template file, click into the artwork here, and simply paste the artwork. I'm just going to zoom out and rescale this image down. And you can see already, as I drag this real photo around, we have a completely compatible Game Boy 4-bit uh, artwork. You can also see that if we just hide the top layers, all of our file is still there. We can edit it and manipulate it however we like in full color. And then through all the filters that are made, you can see the steps adding up. We turn this into a Game Boy compatible splash screen in essence. So I'll give you a quick rundown of how I did it. This layer is simply adjusting the hue of an image to better fit into the typical uh, visual for Game Boys. So what I found is that most images simply shifted on the hue slightly over to the right, tended to output more on the black and white scale when combined with a black and white filter that then pulls the blues out of the color. So I've worked with this a lot to perfect uh, getting it to visually look like a Game Boy game fairly easily from most images. And it's these filters that I've applied all together. So we have the color shift first. We have an optional dither, which if we just make this 100% transparent and normal, you'll see I've just made a grid pattern. So this is just a dither grid pattern. If you then set that to overlay, you can see it overlays over the image. And then if you fade it down, you simply get less of a dither. And you can kind of merge as much as you want or as little as you want to kind of dither a flat image like that where you can see you don't really see the writing. And you bring it up and it kind of. So from a flat image like this, bring it up slightly. And I tend to find like 4% is a good amount. It just gives a little bit of sort of anti aliasing. So when you zoom out with and without dither, just kind of makes it look more realistic. After that, we have to do a black and white layer. And as I mentioned, this is where you can tweak the colors. And as you can see, if I move the blue in that specific image, you can see it changes how the image visually appears. But I did tend to find almost universally pulling a bit of the blue out and adding more magenta, you know, not too much and too little, gives it just the right amount. So you can play with these custom to your exact image. You can play with the black and white tweaking and the color. The indexes is simply a posterize, which limits each specific color range to four colors. So you have to black and white image first, because if you don't, you can see there there's a lot more than four colors. It will limit every color branch to four colors. So make sure black and white is enabled and index is above. And then finally, this is what then matches our color palette to a sprite's color palette. So if we move this around, you can change the color palette visually on screen. But if you do that, this color palette won't match the A sprite and might not paste in right. So that's a quick overview of what to do. All you have to do is get your artwork into this place here. You can use the full power of Affinity Photo. You can draw brushes. Uh, you can use vector tools. You can write text. You can use all the fonts that you want. So you could use, say, Blood and Guts font, scale it up. You've got the full power of an entire graphical suite without being limited to anything specific on the Game Boy. So this is nice and powerful. So what shall I do here? I'm just going to get my logo. And we're just going to take my full vector logo here. Paste it straight into the template. Zoom out and scale down. And you can see once I scale down, this image needs a bit of work because it doesn't look very good. I've included a gradient background that can give it a bit of style. So we're just going to enable that. And bear in mind, now we have the full power of Affinity Photo or Photoshop, whichever you're using. So I'm just going to press Control M. We're just going to tweak the colors. So you can pull the colors down, move them up, 
you can find a sweet spot that makes your image, you know, your specific image look the way you want. And then you can see with a bit of tweaking, when you finally find a curve, I've got a nice outline now on my character, but the logo is gone. So all you can do for that then is copy and paste the logo back over the top without those effects. And you could alter that part of the image independently. So we can just curve the main character, but then overlay the logo. If you're curious what this looks like in full color as well, you can just disable all those. And this is what the image has turned into. So that's the difference between what the stock image did look like to applying some specific curves to add contrast, which then turns it into this visual image. So that makes it nice and easy and really powerful to be able to craft a splash screen visually with anything you like. So any photo you have on your phone, any image on the website, any logos, instead of being limited to uh, things like a sprite, which is good, but you've got basic stuff like a brush. It's a lot harder to do. So now all that's left once you've designed your artwork is this simple document flatten or layer flatten in Photoshop. This flattens it all to one layer. Select and copy, go to a sprite, control and paste. And there's your entire Game Boy splash screen, identical to what's in here. All your tiles created automatically. And now all that's left is to export this and make a game from it. So we're done with the Affinity Photo. We'll just close that down. Now in HSprite, to get it out as a Game Boy file, if we go to Scripts and Open Script Folder, this will open the script folder on your computer, wherever it's installed. And we're going to use this GB Export Script. This can be found again in the GitHub repository. So if you go to the Retro 6 Resources GitHub, Game Development, GB, Resources, Assets, A Sprite, and you've got this GB export. Copy and paste this into your scripts folder. Go back to A Sprite, click Scripts, Rescan Scripts folder. And now you just simply go File, Scripts, GB export. Select File where we want to save. I'm going to dump this in our newly created splash screen folder, which is on the GitHub again. It's just a copy and paste at the minute of background tiles from the last video. I'm just going to dump it in here and call it tile set or splash screen. And then we'll make the tile set name match. So we'll call it splash screen tile set and splash screen tile map. Format C, export tile set and tile map and click OK. And then this shows us the output of what it's generated. And that's it. If we now jump over to Visual Studio, I've got that folder open. You can see it's generated splash screen tile set with all the tiles in. And it's got the tile map, which generates the splash screen based on the tiles. It's got a header file, so we can include the header file instead of the actual C file. It's also got the size of the tile set and the width and the height. So now let's get this into an actual working game. First, we'll replace this number tiles, which we made before. Let's just delete that file now. And let's replace this with splash screen tile set. And that should find the folder. And there we go. Now, load the background tiles into memory. Uh, instead of 0 to 11 now, it's 0, 2, and then the number of tiles we have. And this wants to be the splash green tile set. Oh, and let's change this include, sorry, from the C to the H. Did the uh, C file, not the header file by mistake. And then we're going to change this initialize, fill the background with all the tiles to fill screen with splash green map. To do that, it's as simple as using the built in set background tiles directly. Specify the starting point, 0, 0. The width and the height of tiles is actually defined in here, 20 and 18. But we also know that's the width of the actual screen. So it's 166 pixels, which is 20 times 8. And 144 pixels, which is 18 times 8. So basically, that's a full screen fill. And then finally, the actual tile map. So that'll just be the splash screen tile map. 
we've already got the show background and display on. We don't need to scroll anymore. And let's just update this, this delay now. So instead of being a random delay, let's tie this in with the actual refresh rate of the screen. So we'll lock this to the Game Boy's vertical sync pulse, which is done with wait VBL done. So this will now wait until the next visible frame is drawn once every 60 seconds. And with that done, last thing we need to do is go to the build task and include the C file in the build. So this is now splash screen underscore tileset.c. Don't include the header in the build, you include the actual C file. Update it for Mac as well. Splash screen tileset.c. That should be everything. Save all the files, press F5, and if all works, this should build and show us our splash screen. And there we go. So we can see in the Emulicious Explorer, you can see all the tiles loaded. They start in this memory bank, because there's two memory banks here. And the first one is clearly here, and then it overloads the second one here. So it's filling up all the memory banks. Each one fills 128 tiles. So you've got the first 128 here, and the second here. And when we've done the set background tiles, we've effectively mapped each of these tiles to a specific area on the screen and generated our splash screen. This is now a ROM that you can push onto a custom cart and run on a real Game Boy. We will be making the actual cartridges and open sourcing them probably too, so that we can dump these and program them onto an actual Game Boy cartridge. But for now, we'll stick to the computer side of things and we have a background splash screen done. Next, I think we'll move on to exporting things like this rusty animation and getting the sprite, which in this case, you can see I have on a grid of eight, I've got eight, 16, 24, 32. I have a 32 by 32 meta sprite. I wanted this because generating a pug artwork with actual detail that you can tell it's a pug is really difficult to do if you go any less than sort of a, a four by four tile grid. So this game will be quite zoomed in, sort of a, a Wario kind of game, where Wario was also 32 by 32 pixels. Nice big chunky graphics, but with lots of detail. So I think what we'll do is get this sprite on the screen. We need to make a background as well afterwards, so we've got a tile to run on. And we'll start making a platform again. So that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you have any feedback or requests, do let me know. If not, we'll continue to just proceed through making the Game Boy game step by step.